All right, everyone. Thank you very much for your time and coming to uh, our fourth day four is here today uh, of our daily uh, real estate workout. And today I'm going to go over a little bit about um, connecting with loan officers and things you could do to market yourself to loan officers and be up to date on what's happening with uh, interest rates and loan programs and also some things to tell buyers and sellers right now because I, I get those questions almost uh, a dozen times every day I have this you know, from an agent I have this buyer I have this seller what should I tell them what these are the things they're saying and you know, what kind of advice can I give them so I'm going to go over some information on that so I'm going to share my screen with you here and go through our slides one second here All right. Well, we're going to start with the daily motivation today. You are braver than you believe, stronger than you seem, and smarter than you think. Um, I, I really like this one because until you're, you're tested in life of you know your of how much you could do emotionally, physically, um, business-wise, and how much work you can do to succeed, until you put up to the test. Uh, you really don't know how much you can can create, can, you can build, you can succeed, and that's going to be happy to a lot of people right now um, that are going through a lot of tough times right now. But you don't have to go, the, one of the things that I like to promote uh, and push and, and, and stress to all realtors that you don't have to wait until your back's up against the wall to you're the bottom of the hole to build your business and to, to grow. So this is this is, there's always time for growth, no matter what type of market, what's happening in the world. And the one thing that's is, I'm a silver lining type person. I, I, I just am. I'm always that way. Some people, I know my, and my family and friends sometimes are annoyed by it because they're upset about situations. And I go, well, look at the bright side. There's always, I always feel there's silver lining. So what I'm, the silver lining in real estate right now, for me, my opinion is it's still going. I had agents just yesterday, I had two agents have new listings that went on this week and have multiple offers on it. One of, one of them had 12 showings the first day. In the middle of what is going on in the world, there's still buyers out there buying, there's still sellers out there selling. So this is like a stress test. If you've heard that term before, a stress test for a business, like example, like when someone opens up a restaurant, sometimes they have a soft opening, they, they, they let people in to see how their uh, clients are going to do or their staff's gonna do with customers. Um, businesses and industries have stress tests and see how, they, how much can they handle handle the real estate industry is continuing to move forward it's this is a not a, a great stress test but it's, it's, it's a great lesson that there's always going to be demand where we are so there's demand right now so don't stop doing your business the way you want to do your business because you'll find people that still want to buy right now and still have to sell right now uh and but you got to be safe of course so remember you're braver than you believe stronger than you seem and smarter than you think Next, something to think about, uh, about mortgage rates They're in programs, things are always changing. And not to give you, uh, go deep into how mortgages work uh, or the, the industry works, uh, is that they're just like any other commodity, any other things. When there's a high demand, sometimes the rates go up, sometimes the rates go down. People, you know, I get this from agents a lot, like, wow, they lowered the rates, so the interest rates should be here, the interest rates should be there. But the, the, the banks, the, usually the uh, lenders that are, um, the wholesale lenders, the secondary market that buy the loans from the banks and the mortgage companies, change the rates a little bit daily. So the reason, uh, and if, you're, if you've seen this before, when you're quoting someone or when a loan officer tells you the base bottom best rate they could get, that moves a little bit because it's the base bottom rate today. They, the banks might raise it up a half, a quarter of a percent or an eighth of a percent or down up and down like that. So always uh, check with the, your loan officer because you don't want to call a loan officer today. They say the rate is 
you know, three and a half. And then tomorrow your, your, your uh, customer calls them and it's three and, a, uh, and three quarters or three and a quarter, it, it changes. So always let your customers know you got to check <clears throat> and you can be up to date on that. So, and loan programs, they change programs with uh, credit scores. So you want to be knowledgeable, but always just say, you know, this is what I've uh, found out yesterday, but things change all the time. You got to check with the loan officer, the programs change, the interest rates change. But when you have this knowledge, when you're talking to people, you're talking to your customers, it's something that they want to know. So it's another talking point, something else to talk to them about, because that's when agents are calling people to communicate with them, to contact them, to touch base with them. You've got to have something new to tell them, like just, hey, what's going on? So, it's, it, you know, you can tell them what the current interest rates are. Oh, there's programs for uh, rehab loans. If you want to buy a house and fix it up, you, there's, uh, uh, you know, there might be people out there that you bought houses for or they sold houses to and, and they might want to invest in real estate. That's another thing, not to get off topic of mortgages, but that's another thing that could, we might see a lot of with the interest where when the stock market goes up and down and people see uh, that moving around, sometimes people get out of the stock market and put it into real estate because we really feel in everything that I'm reading and researching that the uh, values of homes are going to stay where they're at or go up. But of course, it's in different markets that changes, but I think we're, we're pretty stable here. We're not like the stock market, like you're, we're not going to lose 25% in our home values tomorrow. Uh, so Get up to date with mortgage rates. Uh, talk to a loan officer, not just read online uh, or, or because it, what's online is a general articles of what's going on in the world and the economy and just general information, but really talk to a loan officer. And you could email, text them, like, hey, what's your interest rate today? Anything new that I could tell my clients? And, and, and remember, you're the customer of the loan officer. They're going to love to connect with you and give you that information as often as you want it. Slide two, something you can post today on your, and again, I'll send you, if you want these slides, they will be on my Facebook page, but you could also email me or text me and I'll send you these in PDF form. But this is a good thing to do, um, is uh, something to post that you could see uh, a Broadway shows on PBS as a, uh, a website where you could watch a whole Broadway show and just, um, uh, there is a website or a YouTube channel. Uh, if you wanted, I gosh, just, I can't remember it offhand, but the Phantom of the Opera was on. They showed that uh, last week. I think it was like in the afternoon. Uh, they, there was a live performance of Phantom of the Opera. Um, I think it was uh, the show must go on. I think was the name of the YouTube channel. Um, and they showed that. So you can research these different things that people might want to be interested in and they'll see on your Facebook and share it with their people. So anything that you can do to help people get through this uh, quarantine, to get through being home a lot, this is the perfect time. And uh, this is still the perfect time in Northeast Ohio, Ohio in general, is because the weather is not the greatest. It looks a little bit better out there today, but it's not 72 degrees and sunny every day. So people are still inside a little bit more. But as soon as spring hits, people are out there in their yards and doing things and getting out, not uh, inside as much. So right now, take advantage of people being more inside, post things that might interest them and they might share, and then you're going to get your name out there. And guess what? It's free. You just have to find this information. So here's an example of something that you could post today, which would be very good uh, to share with other people. Uh, next, something you can do. Uh, connect with a few local loan officers. Um, add them to your network of businesses. So when you have clients or uh, your sphere, if they need help, you have people to refer to. See what type of loan programs they offer and ask them for weekly updates on rates. Also, one of the things that I, I suggest when I co uh, coach my agents is that one thing you can do, there's a million things you can do to network with people, but I, I tell some of my agents, if you want to do something, one, one, just one thing, 20 days a, a month, like every weekday, one thing, and it's not too hard to do, it's just go, well, not right now, but when we're out of quarantine and say, pick 20 banks that have loan officers that are paid employees that have to be there and sit in their offices uh, and, and are there every day. 
and pick 20 of them, and then you go to one a, a, week, a one a day for 20 days, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, one and drop off your card just to see how they're doing. So you, they'll only see you once a month, but these are loan officers that might have business that they might be referring to. They have clients and customers that are sit there. They never know what kind of customers are going to have. There are people waiting in line for, um, you know, they're cashing their paycheck or depositing or withdrawing money and they talk to the loan officer. That's why the banks have them there. And guess what? You know, they're there number one. So you, you know, when you go in there, other than if they're on their lunch or something, you're going to talk to them. They're kind of, uh, stuck there. Two, they're going to be nice to you because you could refer them business. So you're a customer of them. Three, you're there and you're handing them the card. So if they come across someone that uh, happens to want to say, hey, I want to see when I want to get pre-approved, see what I call thinking about, uh, thinking about uh, buying or selling a house, then you have a stack. Uh, they have a stack of your cards there. You, you bring in them hopefully one a month. And after like six months, they have six of your cards stuck in their desk and they think of you before any other realtor that might be calling on them. And I bet I have realtors that have had some good success with that. And also you can give them a, a little gift if you want, you know, uh, again, when it's safe that people want to take <laughs> gifts like a candy or a gum or a little basket of something, you know, something that's very reasonably cost, very little, go to the dollar store, go to somewhere, and then they remember you. And what, what happens if you have something little with a couple candies or something in it that's wrapped, of course, with your card on it, and then the tellers, other people in the bank, maybe they'll keep it on their desk, something that you can just do. It's, it's just automatic. It's persistent. It's, it's can you continue with it. You have a schedule. You just do it. They just know like, hey, they know you're coming once a month. Like they walk in the door and if you could give them something, a little candy or something that's that's uh, reasonable, spend like a dollar or two a day. It's, it's less than it would cost to almost mail a postcard. You could buy something to give to them and they'll remember you for it. So again, it's something to do. It definitely 100% can't hurt. It can only help you in your business. All right, next slide. Uh, but it's things that you can say uh, to buyers. So I get, again, I, I get this a lot from uh, our agents. Like, what do I tell buyers? What do I tell sellers right now? So one of the things that I tell buyers is, is that uh, it's very possible that there, you, there's less buyers out there because people are waiting. So you have less competition when going into a house because we have, if, we all seen or at least heard or seen out there, there's multiple offers going on great houses in good areas or hot areas or hot uh, demand areas that houses come up, there's multiple offers. Also, I've been telling agents is that what you're going to see, and we went over this in a couple other videos, is that you're going to see more and more buyers doing video showings. So you've got to get jumped on these um, the showings, like an example, I know this is going to happen. I could guarantee this is going to happen is that a great house comes on a market like today, uh, right now, then there's an agent out there that already prepped their buyer to do a virtual showing. So their buyer could be, uh, I'm just giving an example. If there's a husband and a wife, they're at, well, not right. They're both at home, but one might be at work in uh, two different places, one home, work, wherever they could both jump on a zoom. Uh, call or uh, FaceTime agent makes an appointment to go out there like soon if there's a sh allowed showings quickly you know, with with little notice agent goes out there shows the house they put it they they're on their phone they're on their tablet sending them their paperwork in dot loop while the agents at the house and sending it to the listing agent all within an hour or two so I'm prepping agents to know that Remember when we were like, oh my gosh, a house sold within a day or two. It's going to be a house sold within an hour or two. So you have to prep your buyers, you know, waiting till tonight, waiting till tomorrow to see a house that's uh, in demand area uh, or lots of buyers in that area. The quicker you get in there, the quicker uh, they're going to see. It. So, so if you want more information, I don't want to go way off topic on that, but that's something you could go into your buyer. I'm happy to coach you and help you with that. Sellers. Again, um, right now we, we're still in a seller's market in a lot of areas. Uh, there's plenty of buyers coming into the market, are still in the market, and there's going to be more coming in soon. So I tell sellers, if you want, I mean, if you really have to sell, why not right now? It's kind of like I've 
I, I tell uh, agents and sellers when they go, you know, it's, it's, it's Ohio, it's, it's uh, January, middle of January, and the, this week it's the average number is five degrees. You know, should we list our house? Of course. This is the perfect time to, to list your house because if you need to sell right now, this is the perfect time because the buyers coming out are motivated buyers. They're coming out and there's three feet of snow and it's five degrees outside and it gets dark at four o'clock in the afternoon and they're coming out. Um, they're many motivated buyers. Same right now. If you're if they're out risking their their health uh, and know what's happening out there, they're motivated buyers so there's really in my opinion again there's this under up debate up for debate is there's no really bad time to sell your house is if you need to sell it just put it on the market now some people like to wait till spring but then there's more competition there so there's more houses for sale so is that a good thing or is that a bad thing is there more buyers uh, you have multiple offers you know, it, you, you never know 100% what's better, but you know, if you have to sell now, why not put it now? It's not a bad time to sell. So those are something that you could tell your buyers uh, and to get your buyers going your sellers to get your sellers going. So, so today, let me start, oop, let me go back there, share my screen. Sorry, second, stop sharing. There we go. So uh, again, today to wrap up, um, and let me get to the chat if anybody, oh, no questions right now. But if you have any questions, you could contact me if you wanna go over this, how to implement, how to really connect with loan officers. I could go on for an hour just on how to uh, use loan officers as a source of business and how to connect with them, how to come up with a system. I'm a very big system oriented person. Put it in a calendar, put it every, you know, one, the first Monday of every month, the second as, as the first Tuesday of every month, just constant, constant, constant of persistence and a system of connecting with people and, and give them information that you give them be a little different each month. And, and that's going to get you in on top of mind. Um, loan officers are great because they want your business. They'll talk to you. If you call a loan officer just to connect with them, they're going to pick up the phone too. Well, let me say a uh, loan officer that really wants to network because they're going to hope that you give them business too. Also, it helps. I've seen it happen. It helps with transactions sometimes. Example is if you don't, if you connect with 20 different loan officers every month and you have a buyer and they're buying a house, a listing, and you and that other agent have never dealt together uh, uh, with one another before, but the loan officer has, sometimes that loan officer, you might've seen it in your past, it helps connect everybody. Like, wow, I know that, that loan officer goes, oh, I know that agent. She's great to deal with or he's great to deal with. And I know this agent too. And then they know, and then it, it makes the deal usually go a lot smoother, a lot more communication because sometimes these really good loan officers want to make sure all parties are updated of what's going on and don't have to chase anybody down. So again, contact loan officers are a great source of networking uh, and very little fear in calling them. You shouldn't have, you know, you know the main, number one thing a lot of agents say, just like any sales, that there's a fear of calling people, fear of what they're going to say. What am I going to do? They're going to be upset that I call them. I get them at a bad time. Loan officers should not do that because you're their customer. So less fear, something to do to connect with someone else that's in real estate. And then also, again, second today, think of something good to post like I did that. Broadway show with PBS and something that they could watch with themselves and family friendly and, and things that probably they didn't even know. When I saw that, I didn't even know that you could watch a Broadway play uh, online. And unfortunately for a lot of us, especially um, uh, anybody that wants to see any shows, we don't know when we're going back to see, you know, when they're going to have sh live shows. So anybody you might connect with a customer or someone on, on your Facebook or on your social media that goes, wow, yeah, you know, I, I'm really like to go to, uh, to see live Broadway performances or go to Playhouse Square. And this year, we don't know what's going to happen. Are we going to have shows? So they might not even know. So again, you're giving them information. And last things to tell us a buyer and seller, what to say, uh, just simple things is that yes, if you really need to buy, this could be a great time to buy. There's limited, you know, your limited buyers out there that might help you. Same with sellers. You have, if you're selling right now, 
there might be very motivated buyers out there that are in the market that might give you the best price for your house right now. So, so that's it for today. Remember, use me as a resource. Give me a call, text, email, instant message me. I'm happy to spend some time one-on-one -on -one if you like to do that too and go over this more in detail. And again, we'll be back tomorrow. Sorry, Sherry Johnson was going to be here today, but she got stuck on coaching calls. She's got a lot of emergency coaching things she has to do with a lot of people that she coaches. So I told her if she could get on here, she would. And uh, I'm hoping she'll be on tomorrow, but we have three more weeks of this and she's going to do her best to get on as many as she can to give her, her, her take and her ideas on these topics too. Again, thank you very much for coming and hope to see you all tomorrow. Bye-bye.